In this video, I'm going to share my experiences with this 2017 white T130S with the hopes that it will help those of you who are deciding whether to purchase this bike either second hand or one of the newer models. So stay tuned to see how this bike performs in a number of different terrains in the beautiful Peak District. To begin with, we'll briefly go over the key components of this bike. So up front we've got a RockShox Yari fork with 130mm of travel. This is paired with a Monarch Debonair shock, also with 130mm of travel. We've got a Reverb Stealth Dropper Post, SRAM 1x11 GX group set with an 11x42 cassette, SRAM Level TL brake set to stop these WTB STS 650B rimmed wheel set. And of course this is all attached to the 6061 aluminium frame set with stunning matte orange paint. All in all, an extremely exciting lineup considering this bike's price. So first, we'll look into this bike's performance out on the trail. We're here at the Mini Trail Centre in Lady Canning's Plantation. It's got a great mix of flowing trails and small features. Being a trail bike, it's got absolutely no lack of control here, meaning one can thrash it round these sorts of sections and thoroughly enjoy it. The first thing you'll notice about this bike is how easy to handle it is, not only in the corners and berms but also vertically, with the bike happily gaining air when you want it to but also staying planted on the ground when required. Once you've got the bike suspension dialed in, the amount of esoteric confidence this bike gives you is insane. Building upon this point, the SRAM level brakes provide adequate progressive braking while for the most part not overheating out on the trails. The reverb dropper post is an absolute must on a bike such as this and is thoroughly appreciated when transitioning from descent to ascent on the trails. So I'm 6 feet tall and I'm on a size large and the weight distribution on this bike feels absolutely perfect when in the attack position. This paired with the grippy WTB tyres only adds to the confidence that this bike gives you. The SRAM GX drivetrain is more than adequate enough for the trails, with a great range of gears to select from, a nice crisp shifting even under load. Overall this bike is an absolute animal out on the trails. I genuinely only have one negative thing to say and that would be the level brakes. And while they're fine for 99% of the time, they can sometimes fall short on the longer trail descents. I know plenty of people who have also had this problem and have inexpensively upgraded to a different setup with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Next, we'll discuss how this bike performs in more of the all-mountain or technical descents. Here, I'm doing the short descent on Sheep Hill and must say that for the first 30 seconds, this bike feels nice and planted, with the suspension soaking up a good portion of the larger impacts and maintaining a good level of control, even on the looser rocks. However, the limitations of the 130mm travel start to become apparent here, with the bike either becoming bogged down or just running out of travel on some of those much larger impacts. This is more than manageable on most short descents, but I can imagine could get fatiguing on some of the longer ones. Of course, this could be mitigated by dialing in the suspension if you ride a lot of this terrain, but I don't really feel like this is a negative point for the bike as it just isn't an 150mm all-mountain bike. Either way, this bike can still provide a great deal of confidence on this terrain and still keep up with the longer travel suspension bikes. I think if anything it forces you to hone in your skills here whilst not being too limited like you might be on a hardtail. Next we'll move on to how this bike performs during rocky or technical climbs. I don't have much to say here other than it's very capable of climbing most things that's thrown at it. While you don't have that 50 tooth eagle gear on there, it's still not too difficult to pedal at the higher gradients. One thing that can be quite frustrating is pedal strikes on the rockier climbs. For some reason, I seem to get a lot more pedal strikes on this bike than any other bike that I've ridden. But after you adjust to this, it's quite easy to grasp what you have clearance for and what you don't. And finally, I'll discuss how this bike performs on longer cross-country and more adventure type riding. So the furthest that I've ridden on this bike is around 40 kilometers, and I can say that there was absolutely no issues at all with comfort. So I can imagine it would be more than manageable to ride a further 40 kilometers if you wish to do so. I suppose the trade-off for great control on the trails and descent is a slightly sluggish feeling on the longer climbs. The lockouts are really easy to reach and can really help remove some of the losses here. 
This bike definitely won't be the quickest round an XC course, but it'll most definitely be up there with one of the most fun to ride. I would imagine if you do more XC stuff, then the Y S120 might be a better shout for this sort of terrain. So, if I could sum up this bike in three words, it would be control, fun and value. As already mentioned, this bike provides an excellent level of control in most terrains. This means that you feel free to enjoy riding to whatever degree you want. I can genuinely say that this bike is by far the most fun bike that I've ridden, even though it's not the fastest. And finally, this bike is just insane value for money. The components that you get at this price point is just amazing, and it feels like a great deal of time and effort has gone into synchronising these components to work flawlessly together. After speaking to countless other white bike owners, these three words seem to come up a lot. I think that this unprecedented level of customer satisfaction is a real testament to their company. And I also think that it's safe to say that if I ever feel like I need to part with this bike, it will be replaced with another bike from White. In my two and a half years of ownership with this bike, I've had absolutely no reliability issues whatsoever. And I know one of the potentially common issues for this bike is for the frame bearings to get broken, but White have acknowledged this and will send out bearings free of charge if they do happen to break on your bike. So if you do have the opportunity to buy this particular bike, or one of the newer bikes from White, I can independently say with confidence that you will not be disappointed. I'm going to leave some links in the description to other channels videos that describe their experience with White bikes, so definitely check them out. But if you found this video informative, please leave a like and consider subscribing for more content such as this. Either way, thank you very much for watching and as always, ride safe.